My ex-bestie Alyssa cheated on her husband Noah for a promotion, and now Noah's left devastated while I try to help him navigate the mess. I apologize for not having time last night. We were clearly busy. People involved, ex-bestie equals Alyssa, bestie's husband equals Noah. I took a lot of people's advice and decided not to go nuclear. As many suggested, at the end of the day, it's not my circus. The decision should be left to the wronged party, and that is Noah. I also decided to reach out to Alyssa before telling Noah and gave her a chance to confess to him herself. After talking to her, I seriously considered contacting her parents about medical help because she seemed so unbothered and non-remorseful about the affair that I thought she might be experiencing some sort of mental break. Alyssa has always been the type to find loopholes or ways ahead, but cheating on your spouse of almost two decades for financial gain? It's not normal. If you didn't see my small update, the whole reason Alyssa started the affair was to get the promotion at work. It eventually evolved into an emotional affair. She admitted that her new friends from some feminism forums and Facebook groups told her she wasn't as valuable if she was making significantly less than her spouse. Something I learned she's been more insecure about than she's been telling people. They also told her that using a man isn't cheating as long as there's no emotional attachment. She's just being a girl boss. She admitted she couldn't separate her feelings from the intimate aspect and started going on regular dates and vacations. Eventually, they started calling each other boyfriend and girlfriend. The affair partner knows she's married but was told they were on the verge of separation. My husband and I arrived at Noah and Alyssa's with some drinks and dinner. By the time we got there, Noah had already finished a bottle of wine. Surprisingly, Alyssa confessed to Noah about the affair. He told us it was very unapologetic. She sat him down and told him that she wasn't going on a business trip this week. She was going on a vacation with her boyfriend. Noah, being the loyal and somewhat clueless person he is, thought she meant to say husband and was excited. He asked if they were going to Italy as planned, and Alyssa just stared at him. She repeated, with my boyfriend. It took a few minutes, but it finally sank in. He told us it wasn't pretty after that and said he embarrassingly got on his knees and begged her to fix everything. She yelled for a bit, but then just stonewalled him again. She was already packed to leave and just left him there sobbing. She turned off her location, which both Noah and I were part of her family on the app, and we have no idea where she went. We assume she went to her boyfriend's house because if she had gone home with two suitcases, her mother would have reached out to Noah immediately. She sees him as a son. We sat down with Noah and informed him that we had video and audio proof of Alyssa discussing the affair. We offered to send them to him if needed. I explained that in a moment of blind rage, I had planned to go scorched earth and tell everyone. But once I calmed down and thought rationally, I realized that wasn't the right thing to do. Going full nuclear would only hurt him because Alyssa clearly doesn't care anymore. As I suspected, the idea of reconciliation is still on his mind, but he doesn't see it happening. For reconciliation to occur, both parties must admit fault and want to reconcile, and Alyssa clearly doesn't. We've connected him with a friend of my husband who has agreed to help him pro bono until the divorce is finalized. I can tell he's still hesitant about moving forward with the divorce, but he knows he can't force Alyssa to stay. As comments have suggested, this is where we step back. We will continue to support Noah, but it's his situation to handle. If there are any future updates, I will of course ask Noah first, but you'll be the second to know. Thanks for being so supportive and helpful. It made me realize that how Noah handles his life and his marriage is his responsibility, not mine. ETA. I wanted to clear up some questions from the last post that I didn't really answer in the update. What did Alyssa ever do to you that made you want to go to such extremes? Honestly, nothing in particular. For the past few years, our friendship has been one of convenience at best. We've basically been friends because we know each other so well, and we each have at least one friend. Alyssa has always had qualities I don't agree with, but who doesn't? I think it was just the whole situation that made my blood boil, especially since Alyssa has always been disgusted by cheaters. She was the kind of person to cut dozens of people out of her life if it meant not supporting someone's infidelity. So for her to make a complete 180 and not even feel guilty about it, it just grinds my gears. That's part of the reason I think she's having some sort of mental breakdown. Not only is it hypocritical, but it's also extremely out of character, even for her. Are you in love with Noah? Of course not. Praising someone and portraying them as a genuine and good person doesn't automatically mean you have romantic feelings for them. 
Our relationship has always been purely platonic. Noah loved Alyssa, and I cherished their happiness. I love my husband and have always seen Noah as a brother. Logic, people. My husband cheated on me for years, left me to fix our trashed home, and now I'm plotting a revenge mailer against his ex. I have two special needs children who require a significant amount of care, and because of this, I don't feel leaving my husband is a viable option. While he hasn't been the best spouse, he is a decent father. Not a great father, but decent. Most of my marriage has been quite difficult. I financially supported my husband to finish his bachelor's degree starting in 2015 with the expectation that he would complete it in two to three years and return to work. Instead, his undergraduate education has dragged on for nine years, and he now has around 300 credit hours and will probably finish his degree this year. Now he's talking about starting his master's. Most of the bills and household expenses during this time have been covered by me, working 60 plus hours a week and handling all the housework. All of this was largely unappreciated, and I rarely received a thank you for my efforts, let alone anniversary, Mother's Day, filet, or Valentine's Day cards. Most birthdays and Christmases were also disappointing because remembering dates is hard unless it's the draft. In 2021, feeling that he would never finish his degree, I went back to school to get my law degree, which meant I also stopped working full time. Our standard of living took a hit as I cut out unnecessary expenses and tightened our belts. I finished in three years and am now back at work. That same year, my husband demanded a divorce and went to Bulgaria for work leaving me to literally pick up the pieces. He had led our flat to a tenant against my advice, who then damaged it. On New Year's Eve, I was getting the damage repaired so it could be rented again. He informed me via phone call that he was going to stay with his ex-girlfriend. When I asked him to reconsider so we could try to work on our marriage, he revealed that he had been unfaithful throughout our marriage with her and intended to continue. I had never engaged in any infidelity during our marriage and never suspected him so it hit me really hard. I was completely devastated and called a friend who was going through a divorce because I had no one else to turn to. I was sleeping on the floor of a gutted condo on New Year's Eve. We started talking regularly and eventually began seeing each other six months later. Around June, my husband mentioned wanting to reconcile. I thought that once he was back in the US, we could discuss the possibility of having an open marriage. Earlier, before my husband admitted that his ex-girlfriend was also his affair partner, he told me that she and her husband were swingers and asked if I would consider meeting them to see if there was any chemistry. I declined, and he dropped the subject. However, unbeknownst to me, he had been involved with her for about five to six years by that point in 2018. She knew he was married, and together with her husband, they managed to keep the infidelity hidden from me. When my husband returned home from his assignment, I told him I was seeing someone and was open to an open marriage. Initially, he was willing to try this arrangement, but when he realized that the person I was seeing had an emotional bond with me, he demanded I end the relationship. He threatened to go to my employer, which would cause major issues. To protect both my career and the other parties, I ended the relationship, even though I didn't want to return to the status quo. In the process of ending my relationship, my husband approached me admitting he needed to own some of his mistakes. He apologized for his previous treatment of me, which was terrible. He also confessed to past infidelity involving many other women besides the one mentioned above, although her behavior was the most unsettling. She made me a birthday present that my husband claimed he had commissioned by a professional artist and shipped to my house. He admitted to cheating on me throughout our entire marriage, including encounters with her while I was serving in a combat zone and several times when I was either pregnant or had just had a baby and needed help at home. A year ago, I finally contacted her and told her to stop reaching out to my husband because we have kids and we're trying to work on our marriage. She actually laughed in my face and continued doing whatever she wanted. My husband finally put his foot down and told her that if she called or texted again, he would file a police report for harassment. So far, that has ended the contact but I am still very angry about the fact that I would have walked away from this situation in 2014 before having children with him if I had known he was already cheating on me with her. She doesn't work and is financially supported by her husband, using her leisure time to travel and meddle in other people's lives. My husband has made significant efforts to repair our marriage. He's constantly encouraging couples counseling 
and making me watch YouTube videos on feelings and attachment styles. He's become the husband I always wanted, but I'm still very angry about a particular affair partner. I don't know how to move on and think that getting even might be the only way to stop dwelling on the past. I'm not considering anything illegal, but I thought about creating a self-funded political attack ad mailer to send to all the local notables in the small town in North Carolina where she relocated a few months ago. She's not running for office, but since it's election season and everything on the mailer would be true, I've been considering making a general mailer that looks like a political attack ad and mailing it out at the end of October. I know this may seem petty and childish, especially for a 40-year-old woman, but divorce isn't a great option because our kids need a lot of support due to their disabilities. I'm having a hard time thriving in our marriage while carrying this massive grudge every day. I'm struggling with depression right now and can't go surfing, so any advice on how to stay sane is appreciated. My wife cheated with a married man, and now she's pushing for divorce while I'm stuck on the sofa and drowning in verbal abuse. I, a 45-year-old man, and my wife, a 40-year-old woman, have been married for nine years and together for about 15 years. We have two beautiful children, a seven-year-old son and a four-year-old daughter. We met while living abroad, got married, had kids, and decided to move to her country about two years ago to be closer to her parents. I work remotely, so it wasn't a big deal. I developed a reliance on marijuana to cope with work stress and thought the move would help me break the habit. It worked, and I've been clean for two years. I don't even want to smell it anymore. When my son was born, I didn't know how to cope with the various temper tantrums kids go through. I was slightly physical with him, not beating or hurting him, but holding him on the floor to try and calm him down when he got angry. I'm not justifying my actions. In hindsight, it wasn't the best way to handle the situation. I've learned to deal with things differently now, focusing more on talking to him and trying to be completely non-physical. Moving to a new country where you don't speak the language has been tough. While I've been learning, I'm not yet at the level where I can comfortably converse with people I meet. This has made me feel quite isolated since I don't have a social network around me. My wife, on the other hand, has a large circle of friends, so she doesn't experience the same isolation. For the most part, I think our marriage has been good, although after the kids were born, I became neglectful of her. In December of last year, my wife underwent an operation while I was away with our son. When we returned a week or two later, she started complaining about chest pains. I tried to help, thinking it could be gas or indigestion, by getting her to stand and breathe, but she pushed me away and told me to leave her alone. I respected her wishes, but checked on her during the night. It turned out she had a bad chest infection, which she got treated. She had always gone out to meet friends in the evenings, but after a while, she started doing it more frequently. In January, she went out with some friends and got home at 3 a.m. This bothered me, as she had never come home this late before. She began to grow distant with me, and I eventually discovered that one of her friends was a married man having trouble in his marriage. This made me suspicious, and I did all the things a suspicious partner might do, checked her phone, tracked her, and so on. During my investigation, I found out she had been going to the parking lot of the man's workplace. After further investigation, I discovered they had been meeting in the car. I told her she needed to stop seeing the guy, and she said she had, but I discovered she hadn't. I also expressed my discomfort with her going out with these friends, to which she replied, do we need to get divorced so I can be free, or something similar. She then suggested we should separate or divorce because she wasn't happy and hadn't been for 15 years, which she later changed to 10 years. She said she didn't want to do marriage counseling and that I should go to counseling on my own. She said many other things over the past few months. I don't fulfill her emotionally, mentally, or physically. I repulse her. I don't make her happy. I don't listen to her. I set her down. I don't bring out the best in her. I'm in control. If it wasn't this guy, it would just be another guy, and many other things. I've always tried to support her in everything she does. I've never stopped her from going out or interrogated her about where she's been or who she's been with. Only now that I know about the affair have I become more aware of things. When she suggested we should separate or divorce, she offered to help me find an apartment in her country so we could co-parent. I responded that if that were to happen, I would leave the country since the only thing keeping me here would be the kids and we would co-parent long distance. 
This angered her, and she tried to use the kids to make me stay. When that didn't work, she agreed to marriage counseling. We've had a few sessions, and I've been working on my issues. Apparently, I'm too dependent on her, which I don't think is true. I just have no social circle here, but I'm making friends slowly. I have been neglectful, but if she was that unhappy in the marriage, she should have divorced me rather than having an affair. She shows no remorse for her actions and has said she doesn't want to work on the marriage. I think she thought the marriage counselor would force me to stay in her country if we divorced, but the counselor said it's my choice as to what to do. I don't want to leave my kids, but I get the impression that even with the marriage counseling, this situation will not improve. I am constantly bombarded with verbal and emotional abuse. My self-esteem has taken a significant hit and she still communicates with the other person, although she denies it. In our third counseling session, she said she would feel better if I wasn't in the same bed with her, so now I'm on the sofa. After the last session, she started telling me that I'd have to get a bed in my office so I'm not on the sofa, which signals to me that this is not a temporary situation. I'm starting to think there is no chance for reconciliation. I've reached out to a lawyer to understand my rights. I'm quite happy for her to keep the house in her country, as we have another house we rent out in my country, so I'd just move there. I've heard the advice that I should separate and stay here for the kids, but I won't be happy here, which will probably affect the kids. Caught between a rock and a hard place. This is my first post, so please be gentle. Advice is appreciated. My so-called best friend turned into a freeloading nightmare, demanding I buy her stuff, and I'm done with it. Hi everyone, please be patient with me, as this is a long one, and I wanna make sure I cover all my bases. So I 19, female, have been friends with one of my best friends, 26 female, for about four years now. It started as a basic friendship, helping each other out whenever we could and just talking. She gave me wisdom on how to handle situations when I needed advice. Recently, I moved from NY to NJ near my boyfriend and finally rented my first apartment. I should add that I do make a lot of money as a computer technician, but because of prices in NJ, I use up a lot of it and add some to savings for my dream house. My friend reached out and asked if I could pick her up from New York so she could hang out and see my apartment. I also needed to go to NYC to get my hair done, so I invited her and even paid the deposit to secure an appointment. Later, she called to say she had no money because she had just started a new job and hadn't received her paycheck yet. That same week, she needed to go to the ER in our hometown for a bowel obstruction. I happened to be nearby, so I drove her to the ER and spent most of the day with her. I had a hair appointment the next day, so I told her not to worry and that I would cover the cost if she chose a cheap hairstyle. She agreed, and I took her. We went out and had a good time. Suddenly, she claimed her boyfriend was being unkind and called her lazy for not helping around the house. She then broke things off with him and asked if she could stay with me. I didn't know how to respond, so I said I couldn't pay for anything because I had my own bills and work travel expenses. She said it was no problem and told me not to worry. I ended up taking her to the hotel where I stayed for work because I needed company for the two hours, and my boyfriend, who works with me, drive separately due to his greater responsibilities. During the trip, she kept demanding food. At one point, she kept texting me while I was at work, asking for food. I told her my boyfriend and I would get her something later after work, but she complained it would be too late and asked if I could order something else. I said no, because I had just ordered a pizza an hour before, which should have held her over. We got her Wawa and some extra food for the next day. She claimed she didn't like the food and asked if I could get her lunch from Olive Garden. She always asks for expensive restaurants. My boyfriend offered to pay, so we went, but she kept asking for more food and clothes afterward, even though I had gone grocery shopping and given her many of my clothes. When I provided her with a twin bed, she complained and told me she wanted a queen mattress and a new blanket because she didn't like the one I gave her. When we came home, she would cook and leave a mess even though I asked her to clean it up more than once. She would then give me attitude. When my friend and boyfriend called her out on it, she would cry and give us a sob story. She would cook my food but not eat it, leaving an open dish that caused the food to dry out and spoil. She leaves messes and doesn't clean up, just sitting there and watching me while I clean. I don't know what to do. I don't understand how I am younger and more responsible. I feel like I am being taken advantage of since she constantly asks me to buy her expensive things 
and doesn't take care of my belongings. My boyfriend suggested I give her a time frame to live with me and then move out on her own. But I didn't agree to all of this, and now I feel cornered. I love my friend, but I barely have any alone time, and it's stressful trying to provide for someone who is an adult. I have a relationship to focus on, and I can't do that because she turns everything into her. When my boyfriend and I went out with a friend today, she kept texting me and blowing up my phone, asking when I would be home, even though I had been gone for just an hour and had let her know I would be out most of the day. I had even cooked her a meal and stated that I wouldn't be around because I wanted to spend time with those people. She kind of gave my boyfriend attitude when we came back, and he was direct with her, but it doesn't help anything at all. She doesn't have a job, but has an interview at Walmart. I don't think she'll get it because she was really rude to the manager on the phone and said things she shouldn't have. All she does is sit on her phone, text, or lay in bed without coming out. When asked to help out, she gives attitude. I can't afford to keep having her spoil my food or leave huge messes after cooking. I've already voiced this and nothing has changed. How do I tell her that I don't think this is going to work out? I just don't know what to do. Am I wrong for feeling like I'm being taken advantage of? I understand she came out of a relationship, but that isn't an excuse to be inconsiderate of another person's living space. Update, thank you all for your advice. While some were harsh, I appreciate it. Today was quite a mess. I woke up to find dirty dishes everywhere. I decided to leave them and go back to bed. Later, she woke me up, saying she had an interview in 10 minutes at Walmart and needed a ride. I was very upset but took her because I needed some space to think. We came back and she just went to bed. I'm gonna ask her to leave. I'm so tired and exhausted. Also, I don't think she's showered or changed her underwear in over two weeks, so my house now smells like her. Sorry for venting. To answer some of your questions, I met her at a camp where we were both working. She kind of mentored me and would check up on me. However, this dependency didn't start until later when I took her in. I don't know if my landlord would evict her since my boyfriend kind of lives here without being on the lease. I don't really stand up for myself like I used to because I was in a verbally and mentally abusive home until I moved here. Over a year ago, I experienced a traumatic incident at college. As a result, I have a harder time saying no. However, my boyfriend and family have been very helpful in teaching me how to say no and stand up for myself.